pace car heading in, and it's Derek Hamill in the 34 car, a rookie out of Florida who's gotten the pole for race number two over Kyle Collins out of Newfoundland and Labrador. Top nine qualifiers for this race are all rookies, so this should be a very interesting start. Here's hoping it's a little bit cleaner than race number one. Hamill easily into the lead as they still, they're still getting up through the gears as they head onto the back straight away. Collins didn't have a real chance at defending the, uh, the lead position there. And it's Christian Hartono who, who might actually have a shot at leading lap number one out of turn number four. Max Anderson trying to follow him through in the 43 with Kiloa Hankins, the Hawaiian, uh, third in uh, the bottom row there. A bit further back, we're already three wide for position. It's Thaber in the 900, Fingai in the 92, and Endumian up high in the number one battling for around 20th place. Everybody's giving each other lots of room this early on. No need for unnecessary contact, but we're gonna see that kind of give and take go away as we get later on into this race. Uh, camera's focused on Mifune Sanjuro, who got a full-time ride after impressing the Maverick GP uh, team with the fifth place run at Sandown and at Lee USA. So it'll be interesting to see what Sanjuro can do in her, his uh, first full-time season here in Hart. Hartono continues to lead in the number 24. He's doing a pr an impressive job keeping his cool and remaining consistent considering this is his very first Hark points start. Giloa Hankins is going to drive by him there as he runs a bit wide in turn number two. Hankins is the first driver out of Hawaii to participate in Hark. He's currently being, being challenged by Andreas Allen here who is very, very quick in practice. Andreas Allen makes a return to the series after uh, not being present for the 2016 Hark Can-Am series. Andreas is still one of the most experienced drivers in the field. He's participated in at least three or four Hark events here at Homestead Miami Speedway. Uh, came into this race very confident, looking to impress uh, during his return season. And so far he's doing just that. He's moving all around. He's currently stuck up on the outside. He'll have to wait till later on, I guess, to challenge for the race lead. Justin Carter in the 85 Welsh's machine managed to lead a few laps, but here comes hometown boy. Nick Pericles in the 84 up his inside and easily takes the lead. Pericles has had to go through about half the field to get to this position and we're not even at lap 15. Uh, he's certainly going to be a crowd favorite, and with the way his uh, car appears to be handling at this point, he's got a shot at the race victory here today. Kiloa Hankins continues to look strong. He's been fighting Nick Pericles these last few laps, but that's been slowing them down as a group, and because of that, here comes Sylvian Lasavage in the 88 out of Montreal, Quebec. Uh, Montreal, in fact, is where... Sylvian had his best run of the season, I believe, in the Hark uh, Can-Am series, finishing ninth. He's up to second so far, so let's see what he can do here at a uh, at a big oval. There, there weren't any speedways other than Calder Park on the Hark Can-Am series schedule. So even for a lot of sophomore drivers, this is, this is a track that they don't have basically any experience at. Kiloa Hankins has cleared Sylvian Lasavage and Nick Pericles by a couple of car lengths. Pericles has slipped back in a second past Lasavage as Lasavage is getting eaten up by that hungry group of drivers, including Joshua Michaels, Andreas Allen, and Justin Carter. At the very tail of the field, we have a few surprise drivers, actually. That's Casey Lester lagging behind a little bit. Might just be looking to take it easy here in his first Hark start. But also we have Robert Piet, who is the reigning 2016 Hark champion entering this round. I wouldn't be surprised if he's also just trying to stay out of trouble early here, especially considering the calamities of race one. Tommy Turbo is back here as well. The floor, uh, one of the four Floridian drivers 
in this race. He's currently sitting in 40th. Bill Littlejohn is back here as well, minding his P's and Q's. It's pretty easy to understand why some of the drivers would be hanging back at this point, considering some of the awesome racing we've been having at the front of the field. Several rows of three wide racing their cars moving all over the place, but so far we've kept it clean and green. That's the 72 of Harvey alongside Andreas Allen Krasta. Brandon Krasta out of nowhere up into fourth p uh, position for now. Awesome job by him. Faber has had to go through about half the field to get to this point. And if he can continue his way forward, he might have a shot at the race lead in a few laps. Andreas Allen, awesome drive off the outside there. As it appears Joshua Michaels is going after Kiloa Hankins for the race lead. Joshua Michaels may have the lead, but here comes the cavalry, as a famous New Jersey driver would say. Crashed up the inside of the 04, heading into one. My goodness, Michaels, what a drive on the outside there. He's trying to hold two cars off on the bottom of the racetrack. They have a lot less distance to cover, but Michaels doing a very impressive job on the outside for now. Not sure how long he'll be able to keep with it. Uh, that's Krasta into the lead in the 09 and that's DJ Curtis former race winner here back in 2015 the last time we visited in fact uh, he, he won one of the races we had here. He's up into second place. Start, didn't start too well but has quickly made his way up through the field and it might challenge Krasta here in just a second. These drivers putting on quite a show for these Florida fans. Grasta just got overtaken by Harvey. Now Allen goes by up the inside of the 72 though. Very nice drive off the corner. These cars are not easy to drive, especially when we hit a turn. You can see Michaels get that thing a little sideways or slideways even heading into turns one and two nearly slid up into Krasta there and it just becomes all the more intense when you're racing three wide in these big packs like this. Michael Harvey up the inside of Andreas Allen trying to get that lead back into turn number one leaves the door open for Krasta there who shoves his nose in there unprotected and it looks like he's gonna make it stick. Andreas Allen backs off wisely out of that situation. Didn't want to lose a race car in exchange for maybe potentially uh, keeping that spot. Joshua Michaels though is looking to challenge him again. Lead changing pretty much every lap at this point. That's Derek Hamill in the 34. Uh, back into the top five. Kind of fell out at the beginning of the race after starting on pole and uh, getting shoved up to the outside by Christian Hartono. But uh, yeah, he's climbing uh, back towards the front of the field. Joshua Michaels has retaken over the lead and has taken charge, but he's being reeled in by Kyle Collins and three Floridian drivers. That's PJ Williams in the Denny's number 26, the 33 of DJ Curtis, former race winner there, moving a while around a little bit sketchily off of turn number four. And Derek Hamill has to give up the spot to Curtis back there. Here comes John Bonnell in the number 53. Amazing job by that team. They had not much confidence heading into this round. Didn't feel that their setup was very good at the beginning of the race. Had a very poor qualifying effort. But in the end, Bunnell has piloted that thing up into the podium spot, up in a second, and how he comes with a run on the 04 of Joshua Michaels as we come across the start finish line. We're more than halfway in at this point. Still green flag. We've gone green flag the whole way. Very impressive job by these guys. They're putting on a show, but no one is going home at this point with a wrecked race car. Kyle Collins now in second, just got by Joshua Michaels, now looking on the lead. Bunnell gets loose or went to block. Either way, Collins got into him a little bit there. Everybody checks up just slightly, but no one loses a single position in all that. No one gets damaged. 
And we continue on. Michaels off to a 10 car length lead. That probably won't last too long, though, considering the kind of uh, draft pack racing we've seen so far. Joshua Michaels has proved very hard to pass in the last few laps, partially because Michaels is extremely strong on the outside of the racetrack, especially through the center of the corners where a lot of these drivers are beginning to struggle due to tire wear. In fact, we're coming up on the pit window, which is going to be lap 60 to lap 65 for fuel. And these guys are running half a second off the pace of their former uh, lap times. So uh, we're going to see cars heading in soon. Drivers are going to be trying to make their last minute passes before the pit window so that they have an optimal open uh, kind of open position to come into the pits. Uh, it's going to be hard to make the passes, but that's certainly not going to stop him from trying here. Christian Hartono takes a peek down to the inside. Don't make it for wide, man. Oh, boy. Oh, man. Andreas Allen is was real uh, all over the place in that corner, as was Hankins, but they ca kept it together. We haven't really seen too much for wide in this race. I think they might have uh, learned partially from the race one uh, shenanigans but it's pretty much go they're pretty much going all out at this point where there's less than 20 laps to go and that you kind of need to be in a good position heading into the pits to have any shot of getting out there uh, out there quickly and with a chance at fighting Joshua Michaels if we stay green Joshua Michaels in the 04 looks like he's gonna take over the race lead once everyone cycles through he was one of the first drivers come down pit road not much of a surprise there he had open racetrack in front of him and was able to go on to pit road at his own pace Tristan Wilhoy what an amazing stop by the discover Alaska team and that will get him out in front of Joshua Michaels Wilhoy still getting up to speed though he's in third gear exiting turn number four at this point he's gonna hit it into fourth on the front straightaway I imagine but here comes Joshua Michaels up the inside of the 16 and he's easily going to take the spot. It looks like the last few drivers to come in. Coming out now, no one's going to beat these two out. It doesn't look like Jokey left and in was close there in the 666 car. He led a couple of laps out there as drivers cycled through their uh, their pit windows there. But it's going to be Michaels with the lead. Will Hoyt second and DJ Curtis former race winner sitting there in third under 10 laps to go and it looks like it's going to be settled between these three drivers Joshua Michaels at a fairly mediocre USA campaign finished 21st in points just barely making it into the Hark finale in Calder Park looking to do better things this year uh, Tristan Wilhoyt in the 16 also looking for better things had a very mediocre USA tour in the new Denali car made for that dis those discover Alaska drivers along with Ali Nelson what a drive up the inside of Michaels Michaels must have butchered that corner either that or Will Hoy pretty much took that corner flat out amazing job to get by Joshua Michaels as now the 33 and the 04 are side by side. That's what Will Hoyt wants to see. If he can get away from these two, maybe out of drafting distance, he might be able to just pull to his very first Hark Series victory. Meanwhile, Christian Hartono and Jokey Lethinen are trying desperately trying to catch these guys so they have a shot at the podium and maybe even the win as the laps close in on the finish here. AJ Green has been well off the pace since he came in for his pit stop. Uh, his team reporting that he might have a cylinder down, so a real shame for the number 55 team there, currently sitting in dead last. Grayson Acevedo down on the apron in the number 45. The Floridian driver was looking for a good run in front of his home crowd here today. Not gonna get it, though. Um, not sure what's wrong with that car. Might be a battery issue. But either way, he's going to get a toe back to the pits as we stay green. We're coming to five laps to go this time. Tristan Wilhoyt trying to hold on to that lead, but Joshua Michaels has been so strong today, particularly on the outside. Wilhoyt's tried to take that line away by running it, but Michaels still might be able to get the pass done on the inside. 
Curtis in the 33 is looking as well. The 04 leaves the door open, but Curtis isn't able to capitalize. And that's Jokey Lethanen, who hasn't led a lap this race up into fourth, now into third, as he follows the 33 of Curtis through Christian Hartono, also with a shot at this thing. He's in fourth. He's been awfully consistent all day, continues to uh, post some very consistent lap times. Coming to two to go now, and it's Hartono with a move on Curtis as we head down the front straightaway into turn number one. Michaels has pulled away by around 10 to 15 car lengths over the other drivers. Curtis manages to defend Hartono up high and drives off towards Michaels, trying to give it one last shot. It's going to take a real determined effort by him or Hartono uh, to catch up to Michaels in this last lap. I'm not sure whether it's possible. That's Brian Fox suddenly in fifth, out of nowhere, uh, going for a move on Tristan Wilhoyt as we enter the final lap of the race. Curtis is closing, but can he close fast enough? Oh my goodness, what a run through turns one and two Curtis just had. Michaels just has to hold on for two more corners, though. He's led the most laps in this race. He's led 30 laps. Can he lead the last one, though? Side by side into the final corner. Curtis won this race back in 2015. Who is Hartono gonna go with? Whoever Hartono goes with might win this race. Michael's coming back on the outside to the line. It's gonna be Curtis though, by one one hundredth of a second to grab the victory here in Homestead, Miami. His second here in front of his home crowd in Florida. Second photo finish of the weekend as Curtis just narrowly got Michaels by that much at the line, 10 thousandths of a second, 1 one hundredth, as Curtis is heading to victory lane. Second position is going to be awfully hard for Joshua Michaels to stomach, I think, leading 31 of the race's 75 laps, having arguably the fastest car of the day, but coming just that tiny bit short in the end. Christian Hartono, third place today got there through brute consistency just as he did in the newcomers race if he can keep this up he'll be one to watch this season Tristan Wilhoyt from 41st to fourth easily the hard charger of the race in the Denali Tanana the 74 of Brian Fox stayed under the radar this race but comes home fifth Jokey Lethanen led a few laps comes home sixth in the 666 car Hawaiian driver Kiloa Hankins in the zero, comes home seventh. Brandon Crest in the 09, uh, led some laps earlier on, comes home eighth. Kyle Collins in the 48 out of Newfoundland and Labrador finishes ninth. And it's Michael Harvey in the 72, rounding out the top 10.